is to you, whenever you might be seeing this, I'm Love Coach Scott K. Thomas, and it's our Sacred Sunday show. And it's a really, really special show as we have some really extraordinary guests, uh, indigenous elders from different cultures. Um, this is kind of what this weekend is all about. I'm sure many of you might have watched our Saturday Night Alive show where we uh, introduced several indigenous elders. And we're going to have those who are primarily Spanish speaking with us today. So uh, it's something we're very excited about. Um, a reminder that if you are watching live on Facebook, you are welcome to come into our Zoom room. Um, if you want to uh, possibly even ask questions or work with them directly. And I'll give you the uh, Zoom room number. Um, just go to Zoom. And the Zoom room number is 962-219-17845. Um, that's again, 962-219-17845. Or you can also go to my profile page on Facebook and you'll see the link there. You can just click it and it'll bring you right in. So welcome. Uh, I'm going to start us off with a prayer. And then I'm going to introduce uh, Lupita and Laura. And um, uh, Lupita, if you can put into the chat box which computer is Calixto, um, uh, that'd be helpful. And I'll admit him into our Zoom room here. So welcome, everybody. All right, so let's let me close our eyes and let's take some breaths together. And you can breathe at your own pace. But the key is to be breathing consciously. And as we breathe consciously, we tune into ourselves. So allowing my voice just to gently guide you, but to really go into your own body temple. And start just by noticing as you breathe, how is your body feeling? How well resourced are you? Did you get enough rest last night? Are there any places in your body that want some attention? Hungry, thirsty, any little aches or pains? It's important to slow down and tune into our body because our body is always informing us. And the more that we honor our body, slowing down, tuning in, the more that we can embrace the external world in a really conscious and grateful way. So what's your body informing you of? So completing this part of our meditation by acknowledging whatever the body wants us to know and giving thanks to this beautiful body temple. Giving thanks to Mother Earth, Gaia, for all the ways that she nurtures and supports us. And I invite us to open our hearts and open our minds to receive the wisdom that these beautiful souls are going to be sharing with us today. Perhaps you might want to remember a moment in your life where you really took in wisdom, knowledge, and it changed your life. I invite us all to remember a moment when we had that experience. How did that feel in your body and why did that impact you? And of course, I suggest that memory so that you'll open yourself to again today, hear what Laura, Calixto, Adam, Lupita have to share. And may it 
help heal our hearts, heal our minds, and be the medicine that each of us who are watching and listening uniquely need. <sighs> now entering back into the room, opening our eyes. And I want to welcome uh, Laura and Lupita. Um, thank you so much coming to us from Baja, Mexico. And thank you for being with us. Uh, welcome. Muchas gracias. Buenos dias. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, so Lupita is our translator, but she has wisdom as well. I just want to acknowledge that. Um, but she's going to be translating for Laura. Um, and do we uh, determine what um, Calixto? Um, He's already connected, but he doesn't know the name of his computer. So uh, I think he's only waiting for us to give him access, but I'm not sure. Well, we have um, several people in the meeting room, so I kind of need to have a sense. I'm going to try CK. Let's, yeah, let's do this. I'm going to try CK and see if that happens to be him, since that would start with the name Calixto, and the other names don't look like it would be his name. So Calixto is coming to us from Colombia, so that's pretty exciting. All right, there's Adam. So Adam is with us, so that's good news. Welcome, Adam. This is Adam Yellowbird, who has connected us um, with Lupita and Laura. So welcome, Adam, and thank you so very, very much. Yes, thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. And um, uh, is CK, um, CK Calixto, um, is... He, he's not on? <laughs> He just doesn't know the name of his computer, so we can give him access through Zoom. So I did bring into um, uh, our, our Zoom room here, somebody whose computer name is CK, because I'm guessing that might be him. No. No, CK? No. Nope, okay, thank you for... So let's see, well... Sir Shields, Walia, Asher Lyons, Connie Baxter. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's do this. If everybody in our Zoom room, um, if you could open up your chat and tell us if you are not Calixto, and whoever is not Calixto, um, or Calixto, if you can access the chat box, if you can see the chat box. Put in, uh, this is me, and then I'll be able to determine which computer is you, all right? And while we do that, I'm going to put the spotlight on Adam uh, to share a little bit with us um, uh, what your experience has been of Laura and Calixto and why uh, you're excited about sharing, having them share their wisdom with us today, Adam. So, uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge Adam, who's made all of this happen. Um, he's been incredible. And welcome, Adam. And thank you for your dedication to bringing the wisdom of indigenous elders to our world. Yes, yes, yes. Well, good morning again, everyone. Um, I want to thank you uh, for hosting us here. It's a great honor, um, you know. And every day we further our education of learning and being able to work with the tools at hand, uh, being through and working with Zoom here. So I wanna, you know, thank you each and every one of you for your patience, for myself, Calixto, and those that are adapting to this technology here and learning all about that medicine. Um, so what I'd like to share too is, my journey has been a long journey here working with my relatives from Mexico um Lupita and Laura we've spent uh many many years uh getting in touch and being in tuned with our efforts and works and the revival of basically you know working with mother earth um which we we have a ceremony in Mexico and around the world that we do is called the Earth Dance 8 International Multicultural Gathering 
And so it's in working with all cultures and traditions and people um, to help revive and restore the mother earth and to support her system. And along with the balance of the masculine and feminine and for building a future for our children. And they're just very, Lupita and Laura are very renowned in their community. They're doing excellent work of bringing food, education, um, you know, through the store, which she'll explain more to. And, and how they, if you were to meet them, it's like, I could talk all about them forever, but if you were to meet them, you know, in the ground with their family and see the representation of how they treat and how they live with their family and community, it's just a, it's just a really wholesome, heartfelt um, experience for me to, to grow with my, uh, I call it my adopted family, but this is in true essence, part of my wholesome family, Laura and uh, Lupita here. We spent many, I talked about on the show last night about initiations, ceremonials and prayer. Um, we spent many, many years, I believe well over 20 years now praying and working with the ancestral sites, sacred sites and working on between the borders too. That's been a lot of our work. Um, also with uh, the schools and governments, uh, border patrols, immigration uh, on the transformation and healing that can come around those type of issues having to do with borders or countries and nations. And so our efforts uh, individually and what they've done individually through their meditation, prayer, health and well-being has been an inspiration to myself and my family, my friends and relations. And they continue that work and we will continue that throughout life. And so we're always in touch. We help one another. We help each other sustain and provide um, it's just completely changed my life. Um, to me, I know I, <clears throat> I'm sharing with y'all Mexico and over the border. There's, there's no separation on borders for me. And I'm just distinguishing that because that's, you know, how we would go about saying different countries and things. But there's, there's no uh, blockades for me when it comes to borders or boundaries. You know, it's always, we're always connected, always connected, always connected. There's a lot I want to share about that, um, you know, with, with and about them. I know we have, you know, a limited time for the show here, but in efforts and reflection too, as you know, we, we are bringing Calixto. I, hopefully we've got him tuning in here. He's Calixto's literally been up several days. He's uh, come down from the mountains to be with us. Um, he's a man that travels the world. Uh, sharing his ancient wisdom and knowledge. Um, I've been there to his land and region many, many years now working. And he, him and his people, the Iowaco people, hold some of the most profound ancient original instructions that um, have come to be that, I, that I'm studying with over the last 11 years. And, and, and the, the most simplest... Um, just not complex ways have, you know, touched my heart and being mind, body and spirit so much. And with his elders, which they call the mamos, which are like very high priests and sagas, which are the priestess. And so they still hold this ancient knowledge. I, I spoke last night too about uh, his people also that they plant cities, they plant rivers, they, they, they plant trees from, from the essence of, of the mother, from the essence of the women. And, and it's something that inherent we all carry, but maybe we don't implement that into our lives. And um, we, we bring him and we work together with Calixto pretty much every year here in the United States and support his efforts in the restoration and the preservation and protection of his uh, culture and traditions, which are so vital to our humanity in this time. And I, I would truly say the same thing for Lupita and Laura in, in where they reside in this great, they're holding this divinity of this golden thread I see in the city of Mexicali. I mean, what a spectacular, what an amazing, to be able to do that in that city. I'm just like, when I go there, I'm just like so happy to see that and uh, what the work that you all are doing and, uh, and 
Yeah, we're familia. We're even Calixto there, you know, we're family, you know, even though nowadays we're utilizing this Zoom, Laura, if you spoke to, you know, we're, we're, you feel it. We feel it. I was so emotional. Even now I feel the essence and the resonance of our love, our, our support for one another through our through uh, our work, like some of the, you know, businesses we're opening with the CBD and the food and the health, you know, that this is how we're supporting one another in these times. And that to me, along with Calixto, what we're doing in South Central Mexico and North America is we're literally creating um, the ancestral trade routes. We're opening the doorways and the passageways. And it's about the unification of, of, of when we begin to understand it's the unification of governing bodies and people, the people and government united, and we can do it. We can work together to create a better future for our humanity and for one another and our children's. And I also want to remember, because we're speaking about the future generations is Krista. You know, Krista is one of um, our relatives, the granddaughter of uh, Laura. And I always, you know, my prayer is in infusing into these generations, my love and light and golden thread for the future generations. So I wanna remember her and the family there. And so I wanna leave it at that. There's a lot of dialogue. There's so much wisdom that can be shared um, on this show and the shows to come. And um, I'm hopes that we got Calixto connected here um, thank you for having patience too uh, with him and with the countries. Again, he's in Colombia, so I'm um, hopefully we got through here. Um, so I wanted to uh, pass that over to uh, Lupita also right now. And uh, thank you and good morning too from Camp Verde, Arizona. So we're working on that with colleagues, Joe. He's uh, having a little challenge coming in. Uh, Lupita, do you want to just share with us where things stand with Calixto, and then we'll we'll talk with Laura. Yeah, he says he's not being able to enter. The, he's saying that there's no way to enter. I've sent him the Zoom link uh, in WhatsApp on his email and everything, and he keeps saying that he can't enter. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how what's going on with his computer over there that yeah. he's not able to to log oh. in oh wow well hopefully that'll work out um but uh even if it doesn't by the way connie baxter marlowe uh, sends a special message of love to you adam talking about how yeah. we have people from all over the world and connie in loveland colorado is certainly part of the great yes. family so i i'm going to put the spotlight on lupita and laura um because I'd love to, we are so blessed to have Laura with us and her wisdom. Laura, at this time that it's such a, a dynamic time on the planet, what, what is your insight about what is taking place for humanity right now, especially given that there's a global pandemic happening? See, sí. um... Anoche hablamos uh, suficiente del tema en cuanto a es, uh, este es el momento que han estado pronosticando o uh, haciendo predicciones sobre ello, donde eh, los tiempos serán tan difíciles que nos separarán, eh, habrá temor, miedo a perder, a morir, eh, pero dentro de, de esa oscuridad también está la luz, la luz que viene a abrir, a sensibilizar, a darnos conciencia de dónde estamos como humanidad y hacia dónde queremos ir. Hoy más que nunca estamos aquí para reconocernos como una sola tribu una sola humanidad conectados desde el amor. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so uh, last time we talked a lot about this subject, about how this moment right now, it, 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 it's all about the predictions they told us before. The moment is right now. The, those hard times where we were going to be separated, where there was going to be this huge 
fear, fear of losing, fear of dying. And uh, inside this whole darkness, there's also light, that light that is going to shine, it's going to open uh, the roads, it's going to open the consciousness where, where as a humanity, we can look at ourselves and recognize where we are right now. We're one whole tribe uh, really working together. Y los que estamos un poquito más despiertos, más conscientes, debemos fortalecernos en todos los sentidos, como personas, en el cuerpo, con la materia, con la salud física, eh, en nuestro estado mental, qué pensamos, cómo lo pensamos, qué proyectamos con nuestros pensamientos en nuestras emociones, donde reside la energía emocional. Estamos conectados desde la oscuridad, desde el miedo, desde el temor, o estamos intentando hacer lo mejor cada uno desde donde esté para mantenernos en esa energía de frecuencia alta, de alta vibración. Entonces depende de cada uno de nosotros tomar la decisión y encaminarnos hacia allá. So, uh, it's really important that for those of us that are a little bit more awakened, that we're more conscious, that we really get stronger um, on our bodies, like on our matter, our physical health, pay attention also to our mental health, uh, what are we thinking? How are we thinking? How are we projecting those thoughts to out there, everybody else, or emotion or emotional health also? What kind of energy are we creating? Are we creating from the fear of the dark or from the light and the love? And uh, how we're going to keep that high vibration? It all depends on us and, all the, and the well being and well, well thinking we have. Entonces, eh, lo que ha caminado cada uno desde el conocimiento de los ancestros o no, quizá, simplemente el hecho de darnos cuenta de qué somos, que somos más que materia y que nuestros pensamientos y emociones tienen tanto poder para crear, co-crear, regenerar. Eh, desde ese punto de vista, cada uno de nosotros eh, hará lo mejor que pueda con las herramientas que tenga. En este caso, ¿qué camino lleva cada uno? O inicie su camino en este momento en cuanto no es como quisiera ir, quisiera hacer, hazlo, haz lo que tengas en tu mano. Adam habla de que De alguna manera nosotros estamos en ciudad, no estamos en una comunidad, aunque visitamos lo más posible la montaña, el desierto, hacemos lo que podamos hacer con, con la madre tierra, pero en la ciudad hay mucha necesidad y aquí es donde está nuestro trabajo. So, um, as we walk and uh, with our the knowledge of our ancestors or without it. It's really realizing about uh, we're more than just matter. We're more, we have to be able to recognize how our thoughts, how our feelings affect everything. We're, we're creating, co-creating, really uh, through our, our mind and through our thoughts. We're going to do whatever we can, the best we can, whatever we are. And like Adam said before, we live in the city and we try to connect with earth, going to the desert, going to the mountains. But right here in the city, it's really a lot of work. There's a lot of things to do also in the city, not just out there. Right here, there's a lot of necessity of help. Y de esa manera, lo que nosotros caminamos en este momento es eh, 
diferentes formas de accesar a la salud, a la salud integral, que es la mente, la palabra, la emoción, el hacer, además de decir. Entonces, estamos en la práctica de meditación, de yoga, en la práctica de círculos de cantos, de rezo, eh, re, tratando de reunir a las mujeres que quieren conocer este camino. Entonces, tenemos círculos de mujeres. Eh, estamos ahora en esta nueva etapa de buscar la salud propia y para ofrecerla a los demás. Entonces, a través de los alimentos, naturales, nutritivos, el educar a la gente, educarnos nosotros mismos, reconocer que la Madre Tierra nos da todo lo que necesitamos y es a través del agradecimiento de rendirnos y de no temer morir, que es lo peor que nos puede pasar, morirnos, pues saber que nos vamos a morir, pero mientras estamos vivos, pues vamos a ser personas conscientes y felices. And also the, the way we walk right now, this minute, this moment, it's really uh, creating that uh, wholesome health, uh, not only for ourselves, but for everybody else, trying to teach and share through different uh, meditation, yoga, circles of song, drumming, praying and gathering women around who want to know this path, this way, doing women's circles and sharing with them these ways, the different uh, stages of, and the importance of, of having health, your own health first, so you can share that knowledge to other people so that we can educate each other and really know what's going on with ourselves and everybody else and recognize Uh, through our food also, those natural nutrients that Mother Earth gives us so we can take care of ourselves and nourish our bodies and nourish everybody else through that. Um, it's really about uh, surrendering ourselves. If we're afraid of dying, to know we're going to die at some point, but if we're living and we're alive, really have a very conscious and happy life. Y pues eh, regresando a Adam, agradeciendo el encuentro que tuvimos en algún momento, eso abrió un abanico de posibilidades para mi persona y para mi familia de caminar con respeto sobre la madre tierra, de aportar lo mejor que somos o que tratamos de ser como seres humanos y de conectar desde la energía del amor, desde la energía del respeto, sin eh, más bien mmm, reconociendo que no hay fronteras más que las que tenemos en la mente, que no hay líneas que no podemos cruzar, que no hay lugares a los que podemos ir porque podemos en un momento dado, hacer una conexión espiritual tan fuerte que podemos accesar a cualquier lugar de nuestra amada Madre Tierra y recibir de regreso esa energía que nos sustenta como seres humanos. Creo firmemente que tenemos que buscar la forma de estar bien, de estar eh, integrados y de ser felices de la manera que cada uno lo entienda y eso es lo mejor que podemos aportar a este momento donde la Madre Tierra nos necesita tan fuertes, tan ecuánimes y capaces de apoyar a los que no se sienten tan fuertes. So, uh, again, uh, being grateful to Adam, going back to Adam, being grateful because uh, That encountering with him allowed me and my family, my relatives, to really walk uh, upon this earth with the best we can as human beings to connect with the energy of respect, with love, 
really recognizing that there's no borders, there's no lines, there's no places we cannot connect through our spirit in any part of Mother Earth that energy that allows us to be here, that nourishes us, that carries us. And without a doubt, we need to look the way, the different forms, we can really have that well-being, being happy, however you wanna, however you know how to be happy or whatever happiness it is to you, it's really what you're gonna give. And with that equanimity, to share with the people who are not doing well or not or do not know or are confused at this moment. I want to just bring in Adam for a moment. Uh, thank you so much for this. So grateful to have you with us. Adam, how do you find the, the message that we're hearing from Laura through Lupita? How does that, um, is there a commonality uh, with the different elders that you speak to. And since Calixto is having trouble actually joining us, uh, how does this dovetail with your understanding of what Calixto's message might be? And you need to unmute, Adam. Okay, yes. Um, so to tie this in, because as the theme to the global community, and that's what we're working towards. Um, that's where our origin, I truly believe, has always been. And what Laura was saying about the borders, you know, that is part of our imagination that that we've allowed this separation to occur, um, or or support the systems or governing bodies to be, and in our belief that we agree with them and we are in resistance because we like or don't like. Um, why I'm sharing that is because it, it's not only a belief, but it's, it's something that we've been feeding for 500 years, the, this, the, this, this, um, this cord or this belief that we're in this box or boundaries. And so we've supported the systems and governing bodies externally of us. What I've learned through being with the Mamos and with Calixto and his people, and I believe this was part of what he would share and I'm sure a lot more in depth or more universal and just earth in his own perception, but um, that uh, they helped me understand to break down those barriers within sight of my own systems, within sight of my own governing bodies. And, and that, that would be, could be meridian systems, chakras, energies, my my ABCDs, my one, two, threes, my my agreements from birth that since when I since even from the original certificate of birth and life, um, that what they've shared with me in essence is that when we clean that, when we clean our mind, body, and spirit, health, uh, all the resources with inside of us energetically, physically through through medicines through herbs through meditation through these practices they actually they have a cleaning process there's a very uh pure you know way to do that that calixto and his people teach and um when we clean that that's how we clean as we clean the waters of our emotions our thoughts our ancestral wounding whatever that may be that we've incarnated in this lifetime back through mama and father and grandmama and grandfather, that when we clean that, when we identify that and we actually feed that instead of cutting, what I was learned also in part of my teachings is cutting the cords, separation, separation, peace. It, you know, so peace in this, what is this looks like a separation is the unification that you unified you know, coming together, which is an old mantra, instead of peace of being separated or cutting the cords that disconnects me, and I'm trying to find that peace or fight for peace, is to clean that fabric, clean the cord, clean the tithing, the golden thread is what they would share. So in the visualization and then feed that, then the boundaries and the systems and, and the governing bodies with inside of myself begin to correlate and respond to that, then my consciousness, and I would share this, you know, through trainings day and night, you know, we spent days, seven days and seven nights not sleeping and working and breaking down those boundaries 
with Calixtos, with the Mamos up there, is when you clean that, that the dissolving of the external systems and governing bodies, it begins to dissolve that. And there's a cooperation, a unification between the internal systems and governing bodies to the external systems and governing bodies. And this isn't just through Calixto and his people or the teachings of the grandmamas and Laura. This is a collective, this is an inherent right of each and every one. This is what Calixto and his people shared. Each and every one of us has this essence, has this to bring to Zoom, to the table, to the sacred fire councils. And so as we do that, and, and this pivotal point right now that we're in, in these days, which could look like the greatest darkness, the greatest difficulties can bring us the greatest light and the greatest inspiration that if we can clean this during these days, that we will um, be able to make that connection to the direct source. Now, I can see in, in reflection too, not being able to connect, this meant Calixto's connected to Zoom and done these meetings over and over. Now, some reason the frequency and everything's not connecting here, which is part of a reflection probably showing of, of a global, you know, how we're all trying to plug in and connect too. It's something that we can work towards. We can work towards the better communication in this. So in by instance, something Calixto and I are working with, I've traveled to his, his homeland and in the mountains. As we clean this and we clean the systems and governing bodies, not only for our, ourselves, but our families, relations, our children, our abuelas and you know, grandmothers and grandfathers, now we can begin to do and build this global community. This is, uh, I was just with him in spring in Colombia, and he shared <clears throat> with me a map. And there was a reason for that. It was a map of mapping his ancestral community and, and hit the knowledge. It was the beginning phases and steps of his lineage within his community. And so what he said to me is, if we can do this in ourselves, now that in community, friends, family, spiritual community, in, in our work, as we develop this, then in 2021, we will be able to share this with the broader global community. And the, this is our opportunity to build a global community. For example, what we're doing with Calixto now is in the building of the global community, what do we need? We need clean water, we need fresh air, we need good earth, pristine, and food. These are some of the bay in earth, air, fire, and water, and ether. So what we're doing now is creating the resonance inside of ourselves, the systems and the governing bodies. Here, let's say here where I'm at, here where you're at, Scott, Laura, like Laura has, and hopefully she shares more about what she's doing, bringing, anchoring her golden thread of light of her healthy food, yoga, meditation, what you're doing, Scott, and many others that are listening here. Calixto's doing, he's working on the same thing there. Now we're going to build this thread of golden thread of exchange. And we're working actually on reawakening the ancestral trade routes and harmoniously bringing directly from Calixto's village to us. Like we have Amazon and we have these platforms that are made. So now we're going to, we're, we're beginning to move the coffee, cacao, uh, fruits and vegetables, arts and crafts, the wisdom and knowledge. Um, setting up platforms, not only through Zoom and these, but setting up, working with the governing bodies of the countries. And, but that was through the inner work that we would do individually and to, to have this global exchange. And it's happening. We're, we're, we've begun that. We're negotiating with these organizations, with customs and immigrations to have that happen. People, food, resources, water, restoration. We have a project restoring ancient waterfalls and rivers, restoring the ancient sites where Calixto, his people, it's happening. It's been done. The platform's there. And this is what he's going to, in 2021. Adam, Adam, I'm, I'm just going to come in for a moment because what, while you've been sharing all this wonderful information, yes. a little mini miracle has happened. Calixto is with us. Wonderful. So I'd like to uh, hand it over to our beloved yeah. Calixto. <laughs> so I'm just asking you to start his video and to unmute. Um, but Calixto has joined us, so I'm going to go to gallery Calixto, si gustas poner tu micrófono y tu cámara, ya estamos esperando para compartir tu mensaje. 
Beautiful. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Bienvenido, Calixto. Muy bien, gracias. Uh, I guess just ask Calixto that, first of all, we're very grateful to have him here and all that he's gone through to be on with us and what his primary message for humanity is at this point. Eh, primero que todo, Calixto, está, estamos muy agradecidos de que nos pudieras acompañar eh, por todo lo que pasaste ahorita para poder conectar con nosotros y cuál sería tu, tu mensaje más importante hacia la humanidad del día de hoy. Muy bien, gracias. Gracias a todos y bienvenido a mi conversación. El mensaje más importante para el día de hoy es siempre a basarse el valor, el valor en cada uno de nosotros, encontrar el valor en cada uno de nosotros. Ese es el mensaje. So the message for me, uh, for everyone today, is that we should always like uh, embrace the value of each and every one of us to find the value that we each one have. Beautiful. Um, and what is Calixto's uh, message about how we can best honor our ancestors in present time? Y entonces, eh, Calixto, preguntan que cómo podríamos honrar nosotros a, nos, a nuestros ancestros en, en estos momentos, durante estos tiempos. Ahora, en, los, en los pueblos indígenas originarios, todo tiene un principio de, de valores. A ver, eh, es importante reconocer a los ancestros. ¿Por qué? Porque siempre uno depende de sus ancestros. Y en este momento, con toda la situación a nivel mundial, de lo que estamos viviendo, es importante incluir esa parte, el valor, esa parte de los ancestros. Okay. So, in the original indigenous people, uh, they have principles, they have values, and for them it's really important to recognize, to honor the ancestors, because they know that they depend on their ancestors. So, to According to this world situation, it's really important to include the value of honoring our ancestors and being part of them. One of the um, primary teachings that I like to share is that often there's a tendency amongst white people to be angry with their ancestors because of whatever challenge or problems they may have had, uh, a family history of alcoholism or a family history of addiction or domestic abuse or whatever it might be. And um, so it's, uh, I believe that the opposite is true. We must be grateful to our ancestors because they made such great sacrifices for us to have the freedom that we have today. And that's part of the exchange all that they did for us to have freedom and abundance, but they didn't have necessarily the time or the, the capacity to work on things like alcoholism or violence or low self-esteem. And so it's our job to take the freedom that we have and the abundance we have to heal and honor and manage the, the familiar traditions. So I'd love to hear what Laura and Calixto have to say about that. I'm going to translate first in Spanish, okay? Yes. Uh, entonces, está comentando Scott eh, que las enseñanzas eh, de los indígenas son un poco a veces diferentes a la gente blanca, ¿no? A veces las situaciones que tuvieron o las dificultades a las que se enfrentaron en casa, la historia, a veces historias de violencia y de abuso, eh, no les permite a veces agradecer eh, los sacrificios que hicieron sus ancestros para darles la libertad que tienen ahora. Entonces, Scott cree que realmente sí es un intercambio 
en el agradecer porque ten, el, en este momento se tiene esa libertad y esta abundancia gracias a los ancestros y gracias a la, a, a la capacidad que nosotros podamos llegar a tener de sanar esa, esa relación y, y realmente regresar y agradecer eh, a, a nuestros ancestros por esta libertad y por esta abundancia actual. Que, ¿Cuál sería su opinión respecto a esto? Les, les pregunta tanto a, a usted, Calixto, como a la abuela Laura. No sé cuál de los dos quiera ir primero. Eh, si me permiten, eh, el agradecimiento es el conducto para la abundancia. Entonces, reconociendo y agradeciendo a nuestros ancestros es como podemos lograr lo que día a día vamos eh, obteniendo para esta vida, para este momento y nos permite también reconocer lo que fuimos, lo que somos, nos permite proyectar para lo que queremos para los que sigan después de nosotros. Eh, las historias eh, de, de situaciones pasadas han sido dolorosas, fuertes, pero tenemos la capacidad como seres humanos en el aquí y ahora de perdonarnos de perdonar, de reconocer la parte positiva, lo bueno que hemos obtenido hasta este momento y ofrendar ese agradecimiento a los ancestros para poder caminar eh, en, en una forma que podamos ir compartiendo lo mejor para los que vienen detrás de nosotros. Es lo que pienso. Uh, so great, being grateful, gratefulness is the key to our abundance. Recognizing our ancestors, uh, what they made, how we got here at this moment, at this time in this life, recognizing what we were, what we are, so we can project what we want to be and also what we're going to share with the ones who are behind us. Uh, it's important that we look at that history, that past, those pains, the, the, those difficulties here and now and forgive. And through forgiveness, recognizing that positive part of everything and also giving offerings, being grateful to our ancestors so we can really share in a better way for the ones to come. Calixto. Oh, he's muted. Um, ask him to unmute, please. Está apagado tu micrófono, Calixto. La palabra es importante. Siempre nos abasamos de algo bonito. Si, si, si hablamos de material, siempre queremos ver bonitos o inteligentes. No. En este sentido, no estamos hablando, hablando de los bonitos, ni no el sentido, el sentido de cada uno, que es el valor. Y entonces, cada cultura tiene su forma de agradecimientos y no vamos a ir a las formas, sino siempre el sentido de las formas, que es donde nos une a todos como ser humano. Entonces, hablemos de una sola humanidad, de, un, de una sola tierra y la vida. Ahí es donde se nos une a todos esos valores. Y eso es el, el tiempo para la unión, la unificación. Y la unión con uno mismo y la unión con los demás, sin diferencias a nada. Eso es el importante para nosotros. So when when we talk about all of this, it's not just about talking about material things. It's it's a not only talking like beautifully, it's talking about the sense of each and every one of us. That's the value. 
that's the in in every culture has their own uh, way of being grateful being thankful but it's not about the form it's about again the sense about how we are as humans we are one humanity we're one earth there's this life and it's a time to unify everybody and through all these values it's time to to really unify and there's no difference between anybody it's just one beautiful oh, that's such an incredibly important message um what is calixto and laura's vision for how oneness how humanity is coming back into oneness how do they see that it's happening and, and what do they see for the future Ahora la pregunta que hace Scott Calixto es, eh, en esta visión de unificar, de siendo uno como humanidad, ¿cómo ven que esto va a suceder? ¿Cómo creen que, que va a pasar esta unificación de todos? Eh, a ver, eh, de pronto no hay una palabra que uno pueda decir, hay que hacer esto. Pero sí, sí, hay, sí hay una energía que es poderosa, que todo el mundo los llevamos. Entonces, hagamos, hagamos que uno estuviera navegando en unas barcas y todos tenemos esa responsabilidad. Esa responsabilidad. ¿Y qué es la responsabilidad? Responsable en mí mismo. ¿Qué tengo que hacer yo conmigo mismo? Esa es la responsabilidad. Y desde ahí nos unes al mismo sentido, a la misma dirección. Eso es lo que nos unes. O sea, yo puedo vivir en, dentro de un dolor, pero si yo estoy alegre en mí mismo, esa es una responsabilidad donde todo nos une. Wow. Um, so he says, uh, there's no word that can tell you what to do. Uh, there's a powerful energy that each and every one of us has. And that's a responsibility, the responsibility of taking care of yourself. And through that way, that's how we get united. If we are good with ourselves in that same direction, Uh, if I have like a pain or if I'm happy, that's my responsibility. And that's the way we unify, we share. Beautiful, beautiful. I'd love to hear it. So thank him for me and thank him for our audience. And of course, we'd love to hear Laura. Mm -hmm. Sí, eh, totalmente de acuerdo. El mundo puede estar girando de, al revés, si quieres. Eh, el desastre, el dolor, el sufrimiento, la enfermedad, la muerte, está, está, es parte de nosotros de este momento de vida. Pero como dice Calixto, si, si yo estoy bien, si hago todo lo que tengo que hacer, uso todos los recursos que tengo a la mano para sentir eh, esa energía de bienestar en mí, entonces Estoy en el centro del huracán y no me mareo y no me pierdo en, en, ese, en esa vorágine de sufrimiento. Entonces, si yo estoy bien, voy a estar serena, voy a estar tranquila, voy a estar completa y ese bienestar lo puedo compartir con los demás o simplemente aportar mi bienestar a este mundo. Vamos hacia esa unificación. ¿Cuánto nos va a tardar? No sabemos, pero cada uno de nosotros aporta lo mejor que tiene. Y eso es lo que nos une y hace exponencial este, uh, esta integración que está logrando la humanidad. Okay. 
So uh, she's completely, she agrees completely with Calixto. And although the world can go backwards and there's so much pain, death, sickness, uh, confusion, that it's part of us. And just like a Calixto said, that if we take care of ourselves, if we really uh, work on our own energy, on that well-being energy, and work with the resources we have around us to be uh, well, to be healthy, um, from my center, I do not get lost, even though if I'm in pain, even if I'm at the eye of the hurricane, I can go back into my into myself being and and be well and also i can be uh, calm i can be complete i can share my well-being or i can be by myself be well and share that energy to the world and also share that well-being to the people around me and through that way we can unify really everybody and give the best we have in the best way we can. And really, it, it's really uh, multiply all this and integrate all this so we can unify. Beautiful. You know, there's a, a very famous author named Dallas Bailey who uh, wrote about a hundred years ago. And a big part of what she spoke of is that discipleship in the new age is exactly that. We don't have to go off into the woods, but it's to remain calm and centered in the midst of the chaos of, a, of the city or wherever we might be. Um, I've put us on gallery view and I brought uh, Connie Baxter Marlowe into our Zoom room. And I know she and Adam have a special friendship. Um, and so I wanna open it up to Adam or Connie, uh, any thoughts or questions that you have for Laura and or Calixto. So go ahead, Connie. Good to see you here today, Connie. What a treat to be here. What a special thing, Scott. You've brought these beautiful people, these beautiful hearts and souls forward. And I just want to say that this is so important. The beauty and the heart that Laura and Calixto are bringing and Adam, and thank you, Adam, for all your work. I know it's a lifelong journey of your essence, but I just want to say this, this it's so important, this, this oneness, this vibration, Laura speaking of vibration, of, um, because that's, that's it, it's physics, as far as how we're going to access a new world. And, and it's about this health you're talking about, personal health and, and, and being centered that can take us into that vibration, into that new world that, that the indigenous peoples know is there. It's just outside of our experience because we're not vibrating at that level. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to more. I, I, want, to, I want to follow through and be involved, more involved with yeah. what you're bringing. Thank you. Yes. You know, I have a follow-up question to what Connie just said. I've always wondered about how the uh, Mayan people just disappear, right? That there's like this extraordinary disappearance of the Mayan people without understanding what happened. And I've always wondered, and I guess this is maybe a question for Calixto or for Laura. Did they literally just transcend to a higher vibration? Did they transcend to uh, an alternate reality or a parallel earth um, at a higher vibration? And we are kind of more stuck in a lower vibration. I know there's a, a mystical question, but I just realized that Calixto might be the perfect person to ask that question because I've always, I've always wondered. Ok, primero que todo, nada más para hacer un resumen de lo que compartió Connie Calixto, les agradeció mucho a ti y, y a, la, a la abuela Laura también por estas palabras tan importantes de corazón y de belleza, de vibración, de unificación que están compartiendo. Ahora, eh, Scott está preguntando ahora, eh, como sabemos, la, la cultura maya 
eh, pues de repente desapareció, ¿no? Y él, y él se pregunta, a ver si ustedes tienen una respuesta a esta pregunta, de que si eh, los mayas trascendieron a una vibración mucha más alta o se cambiaron a una tierra paralela, a, a un mundo paralelo, nosotros nos quedamos aquí en, en una vibración un poco más baja que la a la que ellos ascendieron. Eh, entonces, él, él quiere saber si alguno de ustedes dos tiene una respuesta a, a esa pregunta. Sí, sé que es una pregunta más mística. Que... Es una pregunta más mística que, que cualquier cosa, ¿verdad? Eh, yo qué sé. <risa> Lo veces, I don't know. <risa> personalmente yo sí creo yo sí creo que los mayas, la palabra maya eran los maestros eh, no solamente como un, una etnia, ¿no? sino los maestros y personalmente creo que alcanzaron cier, eh, tal evolución que deben de estar aquí en, eh, en diferente frecuencia y eh, pues es así como sigue la, la tradición, la herencia, el conocimiento y la sabiduría a través de, de sus descendientes, ¿no? Y la humanidad nos, nos beneficiamos de ese conocimiento. Pero así como los mayas, hay otros eh, lugares, otros seres que alcanzaron cierta eh, vibración y pudieron trascender de, de cierta manera, ¿no? Yo creo que eso fue lo que pasó, pero esa es mi humilde creencia. Personally, I, uh, like the word Maya means like the teachers. They, I personally do believe that they reached a certain evolution, that they, they must be here uh, on a different frequency than us because their traditions, their heritage, their knowledge, their wisdom, is still here and it works through their descendants. And we're all benefiting from that. And also there were a lot of more places and um, indigenous groups that also through that vibration, high vibration, they transcend, transcended. Calixta, no sé si, cuál sea tu, tu comentario o opinión respecto a este tema. A ver, eh... Todos son importantes y somos importantes de esa parte de la importancia, ¿no? Yo siempre hago una comparación del cuerpo, de los órganos del cuerpo físico. Cada uno tiene sus funciones, tiene que hacer sus funciones para que el cuerpo esté bien. Y, y esa es una responsabilidad. Y cada órgano está relacionado, para que funcione bien, pues tiene, está relacionado con nuestras mentes. Bueno, entonces, cada cultura, de cada lugar donde habitemos, tenemos una responsabilidad en esos espacios, en esos espacios. Y también um, unido con nuestros cuerpos físicos. Y desde ahí, pues, todo está perfecto. Eh, solo que nos hemos aislado un poco, no digamos que hemos perdido, sino nos hemos aislado un poco. Y ahora tenemos que hacer unir estos, estos valores de la tierra con nuestras tierras y con el espíritu o con el alma. Eso es lo que nos falta. ¿Por qué? Porque toda la tierra está en perfectas condiciones. Podríamos decir que hemos explotado, hemos dañado todo eso, pero eso es nuestra forma de interpretación, sí. interpretación. Entonces, en ese sentido, pues todo está bien, todo está perfecto. Y bueno, eh, me perdona un poco, pero a las dos tenía otras conferencias en Europa y ya me están esperando también y aquí me despido. Y muchísimas gracias por la invitación y los quiero a, a todo el mundo. Gracias, Calixto. Uh, Calixto needs to leave because he has another interview right now. So he's very grateful he was invited. Uh, he says that we are all important. We are, uh, we, he makes, a, a, he compares like for the body organs, how important each one it is. That's how we 
all are important. And it's our responsibility to really uh, relate our well-being with our body, with our mind, and each culture, each place has their own responsibility in that space and being together with their physical body and that everything is perfect. That some cultures have um, gone into the mountains, but now it's time to come down and really, again, get united and share. And it's really important to value earth, our earth, our spirit and our walk because the earth is perfect as it is. It has, even though we see the conditions that we've exploited it and we cut it, the trees and everything, the earth is, it's, all of this is just for interpretation, but everything is well and everything is perfect. Again, he, he said he's very grateful for the invitation. He loves each and every one of us and he has to leave for his uh, um, other interview. Well, thank you. Muchas gracias, Calixto. Thank you very much. Um, Muchas gracias, Calixto, por tu tiempo. Gracias. Doni, doni. Doni, doni. Doni, doni. We do have a, a question from Soraya, our associate producer. If Calixto can stay for one more question, the question to him would be from the Ko Koji teaching. What is a simple way to connect earth energy and the gold and white light? If he has time to answer that one question. Uh, Calixto, dicen que si tienes tiempo para una pregunta más, porque una persona está preguntando cómo se conecta la energía de la tierra con esta luz dorada blanca. Yo creo que lo más importante es conectarlo con nuestros sentidos. Antes de ir a la tierra, con nuestra tierra, como, pa, como símbolo de la tierra que somos, es conectarse con uno mismo. Porque el valor con uno mismo, hacer, hacer una ofrenda con nosotros mismos, es en la conexión con la tierra. ¿Qué es la, ofre, eh, la ofrenda? Es la, la gratitud con uno mismo. Este. Gracias. Uh, he says that um, that we need to connect with ourselves, with our senses. Thank you, Calixto. Gracias, Calixto. Uh, with ourselves, because our earth, ourselves are the symbol of earth. First, we need to connect with our senses. That's the way we're going to connect with earth. And the value of ourselves and the value that we give ourselves, that's the biggest offering we can give to earth. And also the gratitude, it's also the offering because we are the gratitude, we are the offering and our senses are our earth. Beautiful, wow, that, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, Shariah had also a similar question to Laura, which is if she has any advice for simple ways to connect with the earth, to connect with the earth. The simple way to connect yeah. with con la tierra. Uh -huh. Sí, eh, la forma más sencilla es por la mañana, sal de tu casa, descálzate y camina. Si hay tierra, si hay pasto, respira, bebe un vaso de agua fresca, saboreala. Y simplemente agradece, agradece y agradece. Esa es la conexión perfecta de ti hacia la Madre Tierra. Integrar tu cuerpo a la sensación de la energía de la Madre Tierra. Pero como dice Calixto sabiamente, nosotros, nuestro cuerpo, es la primera representación de la Tierra. Entonces, yo soy la tierra, yo soy la madre tierra en este cuerpo y los elementos son parte de la tierra, son parte de mi cuerpo. Respirar agradeciendo. Beber agua, agua, para regenerar todos mis fluidos. Sentir la frecuencia de la tierra a través de mis plantas, 
las plantas de los pies. Esa es la tierra, ese es el cuerpo, esa es la materia. Y el fuego es la vida. Si reconocemos los elementos en nosotros mismos, la conexión con la madre tierra está hecha. Y el éter, el espíritu, la fuerza vital que está en nosotros es lo que nos permite manifestarnos. So, um, first of all, to connect the most a simple way to connect with earth. It's like early in the morning, get outside your house uh, with bare feet, walk on, on the earth, on the dirt, on grass, breathe, take a deep breath, drink a glass of fresh water and be grateful, taste it, enjoy it. Really be grateful and grateful and grateful, connect, That's the perfect connection with nature, with earth, really integrating your body into this, that feeling of the mother earth. Our body represents the earth, just as Calixto just said. Our, our body is the, the reflection of earth. We ourselves are earth. Our elements are the earth. So if I take care of this body and the elements of my body, As I breathe, I am grateful, I'm thankful. As I drink water, I regenerate my fluids. And then when I feel the frequency of the earth through my bare feet, I can really connect to Mother Earth. And then the fire is our life. We can recognize the connection of the earth and our elements, the ether, the spirit, the vital force in us really is part of Mother Earth. Shariah uh, is very grateful for both Calixto and Laura's response and points out that it's very important for us Westerners to really bring it back inside connection to the earth to get we, we get so attached to our external world you know to our digital devices and so it's so important the consistent theme of today's message of coming back to the earth back to ourself, recognizing the oneness of all. So thank you. Um, we only have a few minutes left, so I'd love to just open it up to um, any, any closing thoughts and also give Connie and Adam uh, a chance if they have any questions, any questions or statements that you want to share. And we'll give everybody one last kind of thought, comment, or question. Uh, Connie, anything you'd like to ask or share and you need to unmute <laughs> um i would ask i understand that indigenous connection is not only to the earth but to the cosmos to the stars um could you speak a little to that um laura de la misma manera que conectamos con la tierra es espontáneo conectar con el cielo, no está separado. El cosmos, la energía divina, ¿está? Tenemos la conexión a través del tope de nuestra cabeza, del chakra, eh, de la energía divina fluyendo desde el cosmos, desde el cósmico. Y tenemos la energía, esa es la energía eléctrica, y la energía magnética de la tierra entrando por la planta de los pies, o por el primer chakra, y ahí está unida en esa espiral en, en, en nuestra columna. Entonces, conectar con, con el cosmos, con el cósmico, con el universo, es simplemente hacerte consciente que está ahí, que está llegando a ti. Eh, no hay secretos, no hay caminos cortos, simplemente es darnos cuenta, hacerlo, no intentar hacerlo, hacerlo nada más, de la manera que cada uno entienda, comprenda, eh, ni siquiera tenemos que copiar o tratar de hacer algo que hace un grupo o un, 
los indígenas, o, o sea, como cada uno lo entienda, hazlo solamente. Esto es el universo, es, somos parte de ello y recibimos la energía del cielo y de la tierra, aunque no nos demos cuenta. Entonces, démonos cuenta para hacer la conexión. So, um, it's just being conscious of your own self, uh, just like the earth, um, the cosmos of that divine energy already is, it's already there. We, we have it there flowing through our crown and going down into our chakras, just as the earth is coming up through our bare feet, through our root chakra and going upwards. Uh, it's already united in our bodies, in our, our backs, in every single part of ourselves. And connecting with this, it's, it's just being conscious that it's there because that energy already is right there. It's, there's no shortcuts. It's not, there's no way of doing it. Just not trying, just do, just feel it. It's right there. Each one of us gets it in a different way but trying to do something or trying to imitate um, a group or somebody else or indigenous group, we each one can connect with it because the universe already is. So just as the universe is, the cosmos is already there. So just be conscious of it because it's already there. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Um, Adam, I'm going to put the spotlight on you for any kind of final thoughts or questions you might have. Yes. To add to what our dialogue here, um, for example, all the ancestors left behind the ancestral knowledge and those are held in the place of origin, whether it's a burial site, a birthing site, a site where all the glyphs and diagrams have been left. We talk about the stars and our humanly connection to mother. All of these maps are laid there. Like Laura was just sharing, it's within us. So if we implement these practices that have been shared here today and go to these sites, go to the river, go to the fire, go to the earth, listen to the air, the trees, or go to these ancestral sites, the, the information is there and recorded there for us to be connected to the different systems or to the stars or to the ancestral knowledge or places of origin of heaven, you know, and earth. So it's there that that knowledge will come to you. Um, and each of us carry that in astrological charts. You were birthed with a certain gift as Calixto was sharing and Laura was sharing here today. When you attune to that, this is our practice in earth dance that we've been doing for many, many years. When we attune to the mother and we attune to that essence and to our dance and rhythmic cycles of, of life, that divine connection is accessible for each and every one of us. And I believe the indigenous people knew that in the indigenous ancestral cultures. In this moment in time, in these gateways and doorways, we all have access to those ancient teachings and knowledge and the star knowledge and the earth knowledge and the universal knowledge because our origin comes from the universe. It comes from our mother. It comes from the ultimate mother. And so it's all here. It's all, it's all within us. And, you know, I'm just so grateful to be able to uh, be a part of this platform and be a part of this essence, even in this system that we have here, the Zoom is the aspects and the, and the, the fabric of that ancestral knowledge is so that we can be able to transmute and see one another. And so I'm grateful for you, Lupita. Thank you so much for being the bridge. Laura, Connie, all those, my brother Asher, Scott, and many others that are listening here, Calixto you know, for being present. It took a lot for him to be here today with us. He loves us so much with every essence of his, uh, you know, creation to be here with us. He, he was like, huh, you know, it's, he's been up for days and to come down to the mountain to get on the computer to be here. And he's like, I haven't slept. And I said, I know how it is because I've lived with you guys. And so 
um, in the awakening hour that we are here today, may we be able to continue all that you're doing, you know, Scott and your team and for last night and all those uh, for the show. And we look forward to continuing this work uh, in transmission. So with all my heart to each and every one of you, I love you. I love you. I love you. So I want to give um, our audience uh, some important information of how to get more. Um, so uh, we really want to encourage you to go to the website for ICSA. That is Adam Yellowbird's organization. Um, and it's icsaw.com. And if you feel so inspired, please contribute. Um, last night, we dedicated our fundraising to his organization. And we want to continue that on. So please, please, please. Also, if you want more information about Calixto, um, uh, you can go to, I'll spell it for those of you who are listening, and for those of you watching, you'll see it. It's calixtosuarez.com, C-A-L-I-X-T-O-S-U-A-R-E-Z.com. And something that uh, I want to just read what he wrote, he writes on kind of his presentation, if you will, for me, what matters the most is that the lands are healthy, the water is pure, the wind is free from viruses, and the human beings are at peace with themselves. I'm going to say that one more time because that's a beautiful way for us to close today. So as I say this, let us all hold it in our hearts as a prayer. Let us all hold it in our hearts and our minds and our consciousness as that which we all are creating in our own way. That what matters the most is that the lands are healthy. The water is pure. The wind is free from viruses and that we human beings are at peace with ourselves. Thank you, Adam. Lupita, you are such a gem. Everybody, let's all twinkle Lupita. She is the unsung hero of this experience yes. here. Absolutely <laughs> appreciate you. Laura, such a joy to meet you last night and again today. Connie, Connie's gonna be on our show um, Saturday Night Alive on November 28th. So looking forward to that. Adam, I know we'll be in touch with you again soon. God bless everybody. And let's remember we can make every moment, every day sacred, by seeing the divinity in all. Namaste. Namaste.